Alfredo, credo che sia molto importante aver messo in evidenza la necessità di cambiare punto di vista, cambiare paradigma perché altrimenti non ne veniamo fuori, ci incastriamo incartando e questo incartarci spesso ci porta a vedere le cose parzialmente per esempio la questione della privatizzazione è generalizzata, qualunque servizio si vuole privatizzare prima si parlava della, dei sistemi sanitari, della salute interna del sistema. adesso parlavamo dell'acqua, ma in generale sono i servizi in generale cioè tutto ciò che dovrebbe essere diritto, tutto ciò che viene comune deve diventare merce questa è la logica e in una logica di merce guardate che anche i malati sono funzionali perché in una logica di merce il fatto che in Italia abbiamo sì un buon, eh, una buona aspettativa di vita ma una pessima aspettativa di vita in salute perché già dopo i 60 anni la vita in salute è persa questo è il dato eh, italiano quindi siamo messi peggio di altri paesi per quanto riguarda il numero di anni in salute dopo i 60 bene, tutto questo è funzionale perché se privatizziamo le strutture sanitarie e permettiamo soltanto ai ricchi di accedere avere ricchi che vivono malati a lungo è tutto che è solo che guadagno cioè si preferisce intervenire lasciando cure danni e morti e malati guadagnando sulla cura che non garantire la salute dei cittadini, che si può garantire solo attraverso una seria prevenzione. L'unica parola che non trovate mai nei documenti ufficiali è la prevenzione, intendendo per prevenzione l'assenza, le come evitare la malattia, non come fare lo screening precoce che è una cosa diversa. Bene, credo che anche da questo punto di vista dando la parola a Mohamed Al-Khadi che è un dottorando palestinese che si occupa di politiche sanitarie ma anche di, politiche, eh, di politica sanitaria nelle zone tropicali potrà sicuramente darci degli importanti aiuti Thank you so much and uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizer as well for giving that opportunity for me to to give an um, overview of uh, the Palestinian situation, actually. I want to add just one point uh, for Dr. Amelio about the water problems in Palestine. We know that we have illegal settlements in West Bank, especially. It's really built illegally. And each settler daily uses 300 liters per day, but the Palestinian beer person he used only or about 15 liters. Uh, I would like to, uh, to talk about the violation of healthcare access as a, in, uh, a genuine human rights in Palestine. Um, An overview actually about like what I'm going to talk about. First, it's like country profile and contextual uh, information. The second point is about social demographic and economic geopolitics aspect. Uh, the third is about the health situation and the uh, healthcare system in, in Palestine. The fourth about the health access and what's going on related to the health access in Palestine and the end is about the uh, uh, inclusion. We know that we have now inside Palestine 4 million and the rest of the 4 million, other 4 million displacing around the world because uh, they are displaced by Israeli occupation since uh, 60 years ago. Uh, we can see that our economy completely dependent on, on the occupation because it's, it's really completely tied and constrained by the Israel restrictions and the practices and we have very high up unemployment and poverty rate due to the humanitarian and political situation deterioration. We have political issues related to the healthcare access we can see the separation walls, 
that built by Israel occupation. This is in, in West Bank and separates many of areas uh, and it prevents the, 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 the schools and the, uh, the children to get the schools and the patient to get health care and the employer to get their workplace and uh, the farmer to get their fields or farms. And we have the other side in Gaza Strip where I, I live. We have very open, highly populated area around the world. Two million lives inside. And we are in very open and big open air prison. We are like a prisoner because we have three crossings now. So, the health status in Palestine, we have a quite good health system for healthcare providers. Uh, AMOH by the government, UNRWA, this is like UN agency providing healthcare, private and NGOs. Health system completely fragmented and it's not like a dash or like a cohesive because many of like the administrative and geographical uh, separation. Our health system completely humanitarian and emergency responsive uh, system because we don't have any development plans. Most of our systems like education, like health, like economy completely based on humanitarian and emergency uh, and unstable situation. We can see the main causes that in Palestine. I think most of the region's causes in Middle East are like similar uh, main causes. We can see cardiovascular disease, cancer and stroke and the last uh, lowest causes is uh, infectious disease. And we have very good health, uh, national health indicators but sometimes once if, if some devastations happen, like invasion, like bombing, like uh, uh, military operation, then all of these uh, 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 indicators will go up, actually. Now, mo most of the people in Palestine completely covered, or we can say like almost covered, 82% of the Palestinians, because we have four uh, health insurance uh, schemes. The, we, we actually we know that we have international laws and conventions about uh, the health uh, as a human rights laws. But all of these laws and regulation actually in Palestine completely violated by Israel occupation. The human rights care is really a basic human right particularly because most of the governments are really asked to, to, to protect that human rights and this is announced by WHO. What are the factors that are hindering the, the healthcare in Palestine? We can see security check. If you want to cross just one meter, 100 meter, you can cross at least four or five checkpoints. If you are a patient or a employee or a student, etc. The second, this is in West Bank, completely detached or fragmented areas because we have three categories A, B, C areas. A and B, it's completely under the Palestinian Authority. C, C, it constitutes 60% of West Bank, it's C area and this is absolute under the Israel's occupation and no one can get there. Even the Palestinians live in this area, they don't have accessibility to get any, uh, any care or uh, services. The third factor, aggression, wars and rights. They bombing everything, especially uh, hospitals, healthcare centers and they enter the hospitals and they can send them so they can take nuts and they can take patients or visitors from the hospital. The last factor, permission. If you want to get care from Gaza to West Bank or it's, uh, vice versa, you have to submit for permission. 
or maybe you can get that permission after two months or maybe three months. And sometimes they are invited you for an interview for a security aspect, asking you about information about your neighbors, your relatives, or your fair fathers, everything. Like an interrogator. We have two dimensions. The first thing that like passing the health supplies and medical equipment, it's not allowed. It's really restricted from the crossing. The second thing, the freedom of, of, of people, or the, the moving of people across the, the crossing or the borders, are really restricted, even for the patients and for the uh, health medical professionals and international delegates as well. Some foreigners, they subjected to to be interviewed or some things like to be rejected or refused by the Israeli occupation authorities. The reality is about the healthcare accessibility in Palestine. We have many challenges actually, especially for the Israel restrictions because many of barriers, checkpoints as I said, and separation walls, this is in West Bank, the border closure and like siege imposed in, in Gaza Strip became like a big open air prison. We have four procedures that's already imposed by Israelis. One is difficult permit issuance, really difficult procedures if you want to get a permission. The second thing, delayed on the checkpoints. You can wait a lot of hours in the checkpoints and longer distance. And this is my, one of my findings for the BHD. And most of the experts, they highlighted that the healthcare access, it's really health research priority. We have to investigate and to, to, say, to search about that problem. Factors reported by MAP UK, this is international organization, and WHO as well. And we can see many of like shocking uh, figures and, uh, and uh, statistics. And we can see the permission. The permission goes down since like a long, long ago, and now it goes steadily down. The second thing, this is the procedure, the whole procedure that most of the patients, they want to get care, they have to, to enter or to go through that procedure. The pregnant and their babies, they already checked and stopped on the checkpoint. And we can see 10% of the pregnant, of the Palestinian woman, were forced and used to get delivery on the checkpoint and they can get two scenarios more complications or death other violating uh, issue related to the healthcare access damaging the health facilities and uh, hospital as I showed you the last war in Gaza 50% of, of the primary health centers and 17 hospitals completely destroyed by Israel's airstrikes. <laughs> and we can see, this is a, a picture from, from the last war. Ambulance completely crashed and here one of the patient homes. Conclusion, healthcare access is Essentially, it's not like health system problems, completely. We can, we can restore the health system, our health system to be improved. Because we have 82% uh, healthcare coverage. Healthcare access negatively affected by occupation. This is really a very important factor. We should consider and uh, focus about that. Where the healthcare system in Palestine shows a country really struggling because many of challenges in addition to the uh, occupation and its consequences. Despite of financial crisis, we have many problems. Financial problems, economic problems, government, government dependency on the international aid. 
and also demographic changes and lack of uh, good governance and many of other uh, challenges. However, the health system or healthcare continues to be provided in acceptable uh, manner. But if the occupation really ended and all of its procedures lifted, certainly the health research, uh, the health system in Palestine will be improved and will restore the full potentials and capacities to, to be working well function. This is the message about 6,000 Palestinian prisoners. This is actually, this is, uh, it's completely ignored by the politicians. Uh, we have 6,000 Palestinian in the prison and they don't get a good, a, a good care or any medications in the prison. And we have many of reports by international organization highlighting that. Health or right to get access for the health care seriously jeopardized by the Israeli authorities. Uh, actually, I have some solutions to be considered or to, to be taken in our focus and scope. We have to ask the government decision makers to steer up the issue of international, uh, of that issue like healthcare access in Palestine in the international forums and the platforms. More attention, we need more attention and uh, execution action or serious actions by international agencies to raise this life-threatening issue. Whether it's by WHO or other international agencies or like governmental or like a presidential or ministerial uh, uh, platforms. Practice more pressure and like tensions on the concerned party, especially the government and uh, the politicians uh, associations. Promote advocacy and mobilization initiatives and campaigns. And we have to build a really network with the organizational uh, associations in Palestine, especially the old, who are working in the health field. We have to fight or we have to put more efforts uh, aiming to break down that institutionalization because most of the, uh, of the restrictions has been actually uh, institutionalized. It become like routine. If you want to get care, before you are seeking for provider or like which kind of care, you have to start your process to get your permission, to get access or to press the, 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 the borders to get that permission. And we must to, to build and to extend the bridges rather than building separation walls. And thank you so much for inviting me for this important meeting. di certe aree dove viene negato il diritto alla salute e viene fatta una discriminazione inaccettabile. Sicuramente è grave la privatizzazione, ma questo va ben al di là ed è ben più grave.